Warm welcome everybody to the craft store. We've got a craft long now and I have to say I love craft longs because this is an hour where we'll take a bit of time, we sit back, we relax and we do some crafting together. I am not alone, uh, I am joined by the lovely Hayley. Hayley, yeah. week number two of yes, our craft along. Yes, it is, it is week number two and um, well, this is a completely different way of i mean everybody's seen kind of shopping telly before this is just thrown all of that out the window haven't yeah, we we have and we're going really slow we're going real-time crafting and yes some of the soft craft ones come with a little bit of homework so if you got your homework last week i hope you've done it uh -huh. um <laughs> Yeah, there's homework and yeah. everything. What? Uh, yeah, but fun homework. homework. This is the kind of homework you want to do. Yeah, it's homework that you want to do. And, and you know, if you're, if you're quick at it and you're good, you'll have finished it during the lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that what you used to do? No. No. No, eight o'clock, Sunday night. <laughs> Wait, see, I, I, I was like that. I could never get kids on a Friday night. I had friends. No. And they do all their homework on a Friday. I said, no. There's got to be that bit of pressure there. I like the adrenaline. The, yes, exactly. Like it's Monday morning, <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning. Like, Whoa. No. No, I'm kidding. Now, it's the whole point of Craft Along. Uh, if you've already got your bits, please go and get it uh, already now to Craft Along with us. If not, you can still buy, and then what you can do, if you go to our website, or if you download the uh, Craft Store app, you go to the rewind option, and you'll be able to revisit, re revisit this hour. See what I did there? I, I rewound my mouth. Uh, you'll be able to revisit this hour and craft along with us. So what, what are we getting with the craft along? What are we okay, going to be doing? So um, this is the current kit that we're doing, and uh, this one is your feather stitch stitchinary. Oh. So you get your fabric in there, you get your needle, and you get all your flosses, and you also get a template to actually make it into the book. Is this a completed one? Can I show that's everyone? That's a completed one, yes, right, you can have so a quick flip through what, that. And what so, I like about the stitchinary is, is we're learning. Yes, so last we're, last week we did the first two pages in here. So the oh. Feather Stitch Stitchinary is all about a kind of family of stitches Ooh. which all work in the same way. Yeah. So we did those first two pages last week. Okay. And uh, the next two pages, well hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get into the next three. So we're going to look at Fly Stitch, mm -hmm. Quill Stitch, and then on the next page we're going to look at Cretan Stitch as well this week. Fingers crossed. Cretan Stitch. Cretan Stitch. Yes. Now, if you told me that before, I would have thought that's something you put into soups. Yeah, <laughs> that's crouton. Oh, okay. <laughs> Different letters. Uh, let me show you the Very back as though. well. <laughs> Beautiful. Is this the one that Scott did? Uh, with no, you? this is the one that Patty did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scott did the dog. Scott did the dog cushion, which we're doing on Wednesday. Just before the show, a lot of pressure. I don't know if Scott is watching or not, but you said I have to live up to Scott's level. Yeah, now. Scott smashed it. He's a hard man to live up to, Scott. Scott smashed it. So this is the one we're currently doing. We're halfway through, but there is still time to get it, and you mm -hmm. can watch the others on catch up if you wish. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. we have. Yeah the next one what? which is launching at the beginning of august oh. um i can't remember what date it is it's all just blurring into one the second. Uh, the second of august this one's launching and this time we've brought you a little 3d project so this one's quite fun it's a little box very very cute and the box opens so you can have it either as you can see it as janice has got there the little box that actually opens up or you can make it so all of those sides open when you take the lid off oh, like and you a, can make it into like a mini sewing kit and well, things like that. That's cool. So this one's this one's stitched up. Oh, there's Ooh. the leftover bits there from you go. the kit. <laughs> it's a good way to put all your leftover bits in. But I mean, great beautiful. as a little sewing great as a little embroidery box just to put your needles and your flosses in. Or just some jewellery in there if you yeah, want. Yeah, why not? Anything anything you like. Anything you like. So with the kit you'll get mm. your fabric, you'll get your um, flosses, you'll get your needle, you'll get your instructions and you'll get your cardboard for your templates. Second well. of August, that'll be our, our next craft along and already busy for that. I mean for five five pounds, are you having a laugh? The prices are amazing. Well, this is, I mean, we're, we're trying really, really hard to uh, keep the prices as low as we possibly can to get people to actually kind of come in and, and join us and try mm -hmm. something new. Maybe you're a paper crafter, maybe you've never tried embroidery, embroidery before. I've caught it off you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but this, we're encouraging you just to come and give it a go with us. Okay. Shall we start Shall crafting we? along? Go on then. Go on, go on okay. hop off. So do I get to sit hop down? Hop off to your seat, yes. <laughs> can, I, can I just tell everyone that Hayley gets a lovely seat? I, unfortunately, I don't get a seat. I just have okay. to, I have to give the I illusion that I'm sitting. There's okay. no seat here. It's just all, this is all core. Right. So there were, two, there were two posh seats like this. Uh -huh. However, um, one of them, when I was sitting on it, it just kept kind of slowly swiveling me round. Um, 
so we had to swap them out to different seats. But unfortunately, the other seat, which is the one that Yanis is now sitting on, is great for Yanis. I feel like I'm in the naughty seat. But um, because you're like a normal height, but mine was too small, so I had to go on the big tall seat. That's fair it's enough. Fine. So we're all fine. We're all seated. We're happy. Let's crack on. So I'm going to do a very quick catch up on what we started last week, which was uh, the basic fly stitch. Okay. So the basic fly stitch. You don't need to do this one. Okay. Oh, sorry. The basic feather stitch. I'll You're going to join in at fly stitch. Okay. Okay. I'll just watch so and enjoy. The uh, basic feather stitch, we are going to use three lines. So we're going to come up on line one. Uh -huh. We're going to go down on line three, but okay. we're going to come at the same height, exactly the same height as that first one. Cheeky. So we're going to come down there. Yeah. And then we're going to come up in between the two on line two. And we're going to catch. So we've on, Catch that on loop. line two, we've gone a little bit down. So, yes, to create a V. Okay. And then we're going to step across to line four, mm -hmm. and we're going to keep it the same height as the one we've just come out of, and then back up line three. And what that does is that is our feather stitch, the one that's stepping left and right, like the sample that we've got here, oh. that steps across left and right. And so would you step back? And create exactly. It's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to line one and then come up in the middle on line, let me just straighten that loop out for you, up in the middle on line two. And that's how you would continue with your feather stitch. So uh, first lesson, we kind of played about with getting the hang of it mm -hmm. and then uh, moving and kind of going left and right with that stitch and playing with direction on it. Is the key um, to be, do we have to be uniform here or be more abstract? Yeah, ideally uniform, it really looks better, but it depends what you're going for. If you're going for something that's uh, more mm. natural, like a, a plant or something like that, then obviously maybe not an orange plant, mm -hmm. but you do something like this one here where we've got it stepping left and right and then you could go ahead and put French knots or something on there to make yeah. little flower buds. Nice. So um, it's a really useful stitch to have yeah. and the, the lines are just printed on here to get, help you get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. Then we had a look at it going round in um, a, an oval, so using it as a frame. Mm -hmm. I've got some of the finished samples over here so we can show you what they look like as finished ones. So there's just a couple of different examples I've got in here. Okay. So there's another one. And then there'll be one more in here. There you go. So you can see using those as frames to actually kind of create a, a border for your work. And do you know what I love about the stitchneries? And the whole point of the stitchneries is to give you that education. So this is effectively a great way to explore. You enjoy the journey, but then what Haley's doing with the stitchneries is giving you a skill set you can go on and then incorporate to other makes. So imagine a top stitching. You could buy a reasonably priced top, but suddenly embroider some beautiful stitch detail and motif on there and suddenly you've got a hand motif, that top yeah. will be worth a fortune. Well, well, uh, certainly more than it started off with. Yeah, well, <laughs> Okay, so that was a kind of quick catch up of where we were last week. So we're gonna now look at fly stitch. So I've got three different examples here of fly stitch. Now, mm -hmm. they're all the same project. They're all this um, kind of little Christmas tree project, but you can see they've been stitched very differently, mm. but it's all the same stitch. So this one's uh, fewer strands of the floss and a little bit more spaced out. And then the next one that we've got to actually stitch the branches in the opposite direction. Oh, so instead curve. of stitching kind of, they, they've stitched that way instead of that yeah. way. And then the last one, this is much closer together and all of the strands together. Mm. So you can see you get kind of three very different looks with exactly the same stitch. Yeah. So yeah. first of all, we are going to uh, look at the basics of fly stitch and then we're going to put it into the project. So okay. I'm just going to quick knot in there and just move those up out of the way for a minute. Oh, my chair nearly fell over. <laughs> I'm regretting the very tall chair now. <laughs> oh, this so, one's lovely. Fly stitch. We are <laughs> yeah, because you've got four legs on the ground, dude. <laughs> and your two as well. You've got six. <laughs> I've got none, <laughs> just floating. Okay, so, well, it's very similar to how we started with the feather stitch. So we're gonna come up from the back, mm -hmm. and initially we're gonna just gonna focus on these three lines here. So one, two, three. So we're gonna come across and down where, parallel with where we started off. So very, yeah. very similar to the start of the feather stitch. Yeah. But this time we're gonna come up in the middle. All right. And then we're gonna come back down again. Mm -hmm. So the distance that I want to come down is the distance that I want the 
bottom of my next V to be. So I'm going to come quite far down this time just so we can kind of illustrate the yeah, point. Yeah. And then I'm going to come back up the same side and I'm going to come, that's now going to be the bottom of my next V. So I'm going to come back up, almost in line with the bottom mm -hmm. of my first V. Oh, I've messed it up. Hang on. That, that should caught, that should, no, we can fix it, we can fix it. Okay, so that's going to go there. Yeah. No, it's right, it's right. What, I'm, I'm second guessing myself, it's all fine. Right, that comes down there, and then we come back up at the bottom of there. That catches the V. Oh, yeah. And then down we go again. So it's very, very similar to, that's why we've put them all together in this one pack, because it's very, very similar in the way that it stitches. So again, we're coming back up, level with the bottom of my previous V. We're coming across, down, level with that same one. Okay. Back up through the center and make, make the, the v. v. So that's what's creating my um, kind of, that's my fly stitch. So that's what we're going to use on the, if I just turn that so it faces the same way, okay. can you see that's what's actually creating exactly the same pattern on that Christmas tree. Tell you what, so, this would look lovely with a variegated thread. It would, wouldn't it? And mm. um, or you can even make your own kind of mixed thread by taking a couple of strands of one and a couple of strands of the other and putting them together. I mean, at the minute, we are working with um, all the projects on six strands just to get the hang of it and so you can get really nice bold effects. When we come to the cretan stitch, then we're going to start splitting threads off. So okay. to finish this one off, um, we're just going to go down at the end of that kind of pointy bit of those Vs and then we're going to flip it over and tie it off. Lovely. And when we, we showed tying it off last week where we actually went through and kind of created a little knot and then once we've done that, we went back through here, mm -hmm. pulled most of that thread through, but not quite all of it, snipped it off, actually split that in two. So three strands on one side and three strands on the other. Mm -hmm. Let me just get, I should have cut these nails. I said this last week as well. I never got round to it. It was just busy. Mm. Um, and then you pull those three back through. So you can see them just coming back through there? Oh, yeah. And tie them either side. So tie them over the top of that last strand because what that will do will give you a much flatter finish than a big bulky knot. Right. Good see, tip. that's a lot, a lot flatter tip. there. Yeah. So you can see on that, especially on that orange one there, it's quite mm. clear that it's really nice and, and flat and, yeah. and much smoother than you would get with a big knot. So let's start with a bit of green. I think I did you a bit of green up as well, yeah, didn't I? Yeah. Are we so, starting now? Is this me? Yeah, you're joining cool. in now. All right, let's do it. <laughs> this is just to keep quiet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to work ours from the base of the tree. Right. From, so just take that first kind of um, branch and we're going to work from the outside towards the middle of the tree. So obviously we've got no extra lines on here for guides, so it's up to you to kind of... Do you tend to work in a hoop? Do you need a hoop? You don't need a hoop. It's not absolutely necessary. It's just easier for me to keep it still for the camera oh, okay. in a hoop. You can work with or without whatever you're comfortable with. Right. So we are going to come, we're going to start from the side, remember, because that branch bit here, that's going to be where that spine bit... So if I just pull this back across so you can see... Mm -hmm. where that little spine bit was that we were working up the centre there. So this spine bit that runs down the middle, that's going to be along this branch bit here. So we need to work either side of that. So we're going to come up one side, across to the other, and then just get a little bit of a loop. We don't want all this massive loop. There we go. And then we're going to come onto that central line, which is the branch, up through there, create the V, and then a little way along and down. And then we're going to come back out to the side. Yeah. So about level with the bottom of the previous V. 
Are you okay. with me? Well, no, but I'm getting there. Right, OK, that's fine. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're not with me, then there's a good chance that somebody else isn't. So I'll snip it off and we'll go again. Well, no, I think most people are, but... Uh... No, no, I think it's absolutely fine. So... OK. Are you, so this uh, is where I, I'm at at the moment. Right, I'll get back up to where you are. So I've got you've my loop. come, you've come either side of that branch, yep. and you've got a little loop. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've come up, and then down again. Okay. And you've got a little loop there. Yeah. Like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to come up along the line of that branch. Yeah. Further about, down. Yeah, about five or six millimeters further down. Yeah. And then pull that up, and all the way through to catch the V. Okay. And then we're going to go another five or six millimetres down and go and repeat. back down to the, yep. uh, the back of... So down is that the what centre. you've got? Down, down the, the centre, centre. Yep. yeah. On, stay okay. on that centre line and go back down. That's what i got. Perfect. Now we're going to come back out to the um, left, the top end of the branch. Yeah. <laughs> this is why they should by never the bottom, let me do yeah. these things. <laughs> so we're coming up. So where are we uh, now by... So now I'm coming up level with there, yeah. the, okay. uh, the bottom of that first V yeah. and also in line with the spike of that first V, but the top edge of the branch, if you yeah. know what I mean. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And then I'm going to come across, keep level with the end of that first V and then come out as far so I'm level yeah. with that part. Let me just move that needle out of the way so you can see. Level with this piece here. So we're creating the kind of start of that next V. Yeah. Coming down, leaving uh -huh. a little loop, yeah. and then coming back up at the bottom of that Y shape that we created with the first stitch. Perfect, gotcha. So I'm going to come back up there, and then catch that loop, oh, and Hayley. then down again. Tell you what, I'm loving this. You in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Happy. There you go. I'm just going to leave you on this one, I think. Okay. And then, uh... That's it. I've peaked. <laughs> You've peaked. I've peaked well, 16 see, minutes all into of the these, show. All of these um, stitches are within the same family. So you'll see that they all kind of follow on from each other. There are diagrams in the instructions, and I think we might have one that we can show you on the, um, on the TV here as well. So um, this one here, this is what you'll find in your instructions. So you can see there's point one. We're coming back into point two up point three and back in point four. Now you can do these as individual stitches and that's where they get the name fly stitches from because individually they mm -hmm. look like lots of little flies. Yeah. But when you do them in a row like that, then they create brilliant fir tree branches. Ah. He's gone really quiet so he's concentrating. Yeah. It's all good. You know, <laughs> Mission <yeah>. accomplished. <laughs> so we're coming, we're keeping kind of in line either side of these. So we're coming up in line with the bottom of the previous V, coming across, keeping in line with those branches. And with these, they're just a practice run. All of these projects are just a little practice run to get you familiar with the stitches, and then you can go on and use them in your other projects. And we've got some kind of embroidoodle backings so you can do other projects if you wish. I know they're somewhere on the show, but we'll worry about them a little bit later and you continue on with this and you work your way all the way up. Now you can keep it as a, a fairly consistent thing in terms of spacing or that you, know, you can get tighter the further you get towards the top. So now I'm coming across, level with there, down the other side, let in line with this and in line with that one and down the other side, so create relaxing. a little loop and then back up through my previous end of the Y, mm -hmm. up and down again. And you just repeat, repeat, repeat. And you can use the same technique for the trunk, or you can have a look at the one that I've got over here, which has just used a really simple running stitch to complete the trunk. So it's up to you how you want to do that. You can fill it in using the, the same stitch or not. Well, why not actually do it um, the other way around. So you start at the bottom with really wide V's, and work your way up with smaller and smaller ones. You can yeah. really kind of start to, to play with these stitches and have a little bit of fun. So let's complete this one to make sure that everybody's got the hang of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll move on to the next one. So, and I'm just gonna actually flip this over to show you the back of your stitch as well. Because what you should end up with is that you should end up with little V's, almost like little seagulls. 
Yeah. Flying. Is that what you got? Yeah, I got that. Oh, he's, he's, he's on it today. Love hey, it. Hayley. Let's have a look. I'm quite proud of that. Look at that. Hey. I'm happy oh, with that. OK. Yanis wants got it's one. not bad. Bring it on. That's great. That's perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. And you've definitely you've taught me something See? new. I've it's never done a uh, feather stitch Well, before. these are all the same family of stitches. Yeah. So they all kind of work. This is why they all put mm -hmm. together, because they all work around the same principle. So that's why we kind of work them from one to the next. Do we and these that are, as a fly stitch? This is a fly yeah. stitch, yeah. And mm -hmm. these are all really kind of small projects. So even if you don't particularly like that stitch, you can still finish the project. And then at least it's in your repertoire. And you can use it again if you want to or not if you don't want Lovely. so let me just finish this branch just to make if you've got it i'm guessing that everybody at home has got the hang That's of it the by now thumb here at the craft store if Janice <laughs> can do it anyone can do it no well it's not what we were going for but you know what i mean <laughs> it it it's kind of a good it's a good indicator let's yeah. say okay You're very diplomatic <laughs> but not always <laughs> so you can continue and well I'll just finish this little branch and then what we'll do is we'll leave this one as homework for you okay uh, this and we homework will go, I'll happily you do. can stay with that one if you like okay. or no, you can learn a quill stitch I would like to learn a quill stitch okay right yeah. so uh, you can take your homework um, all right well let me just tie this off then what were you like at school Haley? I was naughty what was your report card what did they uh, teach you to say needs to pay you? attention more yeah, <laughs> did you get talk talks a lot? Yeah. Yanis considers yeah. himself the class clown. Yes. Yeah, all that's that. me. <laughs> Which I think now they'd probably say we all had ADHD. Mm. Well, these now, days. I said, what's it? What's he going to do? All he does is talk. What's he going to do for a career? <laughs> exactly. Boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So let's just snip that off. Yeah. And we're going to move along to the quill stitch. So I'm just going to move my hoop so you can see what we're okay. doing. And you need, to, need to move now? yours along. You can use your yellow thread if you wish. Mm -hmm. Let me okay. just get that one in position. So we are going to have a look at quill stitch. So I'm just going to show you the examples first because these three, again, look ever so different. And they're just done um, with different amounts of thread, different amounts of strands of thread, and uh, different densities of how they're packed together. Because you can see this, these two, uh, they're maybe two strands of thread. That one might possibly be three. Um, and they're quite spaced apart. So you get kind of quite a really kind of floaty feel yeah. to the feathers. Whereas this one here, it's a lot denser. So it's used all six strands of, of the floss and the, you can see that the stitches are packed much more tightly together so you get a completely different feel even though it's exactly the same stitch. Mm. So these stitches, obviously, we're just giving you the, the kind of the basics. Yeah. You can then go and experiment further with them and that's why we always put that panel on the back so once you've learnt all of your uh, stitches within the feather stitch stitchery, you can have a play about with the panel on the back and the little panel on the front as well, because they're there for you to kind of experiment with what you've learned and, okay. and have a bit of fun. So we're going so on to our feather now. We're going on to the quill stitch, and that's on the feather project. Okay. So let me get the diagram up here for you. So you can see, this one has that same kind of um, Y shape to it. Can you see there's a Y there? Mm -hmm. and then there's a Y here. But what we're doing is we're catching each side to create a, an almost a spine ah. down the middle. Okay. So this is our feather stitch. So let me grab probably, let's go with some purple, shall we? How do you tend to notch your thread? Have you got a right. technique? Okay, so with, um, there's lots of different techniques for this and when you're doing quite involved embroidery, what you tend to do is not knot it off, not put a knot in the back and actually can leave it as a tail and uh, stitch it back in. But right. for what we're doing here, yeah. knots are fine. Okay. okay. So I would just put, because I'm using all six strands together, mm -hmm. I would just put a single knot in the bottom of it yeah. and that will be enough to stop okay. it coming through. The fabric that you've got here is a half Panama 100% cotton mm. fabric and it's a really good quality and it's a really nice tight weave so this isn't mm. going to pop through here you'll be absolutely fine so Perfect. just a single knot is all right to get you going on all this right. so let me let me see if I can get the instructions right next to this so you can see exactly what I'm doing because mm -hmm. this is your box by the way that I'm busy folding up this is the box that it comes in don't throw your box away no. that's your instructions okay. <laughs> right well, look, so if, if I do get that stuck, Obviously, we can oh, rewind the show. There shows. you go. How's that? That's yeah, nice. That'll do. Okay, so we're coming up. Yeah. Now, 
the, the solid line that's down the middle, I would say use that as the solid line on your feather. Right. And those dotted lines either side will give you your guides for your spacing mm -hmm. on the edges there. Okay. So we are going to start on the side of number one. Now, this won't look exactly like that initially because I'm still actually I'm going to start a little bit further up on one of these ones where the spacing is a little bit more kind of even okay. because you can come to these more wonky ones a little bit later on. So we're going to start here, start number one. Well, you're starting on the dotted line. Yes, because the dotted line is where these outer pieces are going to be. Let me get my pen okay. here. So the dotted line is going to be where these outer pieces are here and here. Right. And then the solid line is going to form this central oh, okay. piece there. Right. Okay. So we're coming up. So I'm starting on the dotted line and we're coming up from number one. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to go down at number two, which is the top of that solid line. And then we're going to come back up at number three. Now, number three will be level with that first one that we, we came up there. So we're going to be level with number three. So I'm going to come back up, level with that one. Wait, 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 OK. I'll do, I'll do a stitch, and then I'll take it out, and we'll, we'll go again. Uh -huh. And then my next one is going to come down and across to create that feather element. Now, this is going back up in the other direction, but before I close that loop, I need to make sure that I come back up, ready to create my next stitch. And it's always about looping that next one on. So if I just do a couple so you can kind of see it coming together, and then I'll go back, yeah, okay. I'll unpick it, and we'll do it all again. Do you see that starting to come in there? Mm -hmm. One to the left, one to the right. And it's about doing one either side, but creating a loop and always coming down that middle centre section to pick it back up. Do you know what it might be easier for me to do? Mm. If you've got practice lines on the side of yours, what we might do is do this stitch on the practice lines first. Oh, yeah. So these. you get the hang of it. Yeah. And then we'll come back and do it on the actual project. So let me just unpick this one. OK. And we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Come on, out you come. So this is the quill stitch that we're working on, and this is project number four. So let's come, let's come back over to, to here, and we'll give it a go on some of these practice lines. Okay. So we need three lines for this. Yep. So we're going to go uh, number one is here, middle one here. Do you know what? I'm going to go a bit wider. I'm going to put the middle one on here, number two, and then one more across, number three. So we've, we're a little bit wider and it's probably just a little bit easier for you to see. That was okay. not the darkest pen that I could have picked. Let me just give another crack, see if I can get these a bit darker so you can see. So this is number one. Yeah. That one's number two. And that one is number three. Is that okay. a bit better? Gotcha. Perfect, right. right. So we're gonna start with yeah. number one, and yeah. we wanna be kind of uh, about this is not our highest stitch, so we're always coming back up on ourselves a little bit. So we've got number one, yeah. and then number two, we're coming across, and we're coming up a little bit, and we're going down there. We're leaving a loop, the same way as you did with your fly stitch, okay. but instead of coming uh, with a fly stitch, we came back up in the middle like that. This time, we want to come back up on number two, on row number two, and we're going to loop that over. Okay. And then we're going to come across to number three. And then we're going to come down there. And we're going to come back up number two. So you know when you come down to number two, you're at the same level as number one? Well, the levels on this are going to change because you can see I'm kind of changing my levels as we go because with the quill yeah. stitch, we want all of these to kind of point outwards. So let me do it on a more consistent level first off. Let me okay. unpick that one so I can be on a more consistent level. We're just, gonna just get them coming out to the side for the minute. Let me just unpick that one. So we're back to number two. Oh, I've got to thread it again. Do you know that's the one thing that I've realised with having these fingernails I keep meaning to chop them all off and then I forget and mm. then I'm stuck with them still easily done and uh, yeah I 
keep oh, Now, we've had a request to... for the future. Who's this from? Oh, this is from a call centre, but the, the request a is saying... A customer, not somebody just working at the call centre, though. <laughs> yes, it's a customer called in. <laughs> OK, uh, that's fine. And said, what about in the future, ribbon stitch... Oh, ribbon embroidery, sorry. Why not? Yeah, we can absolutely do that. I mean, this is the thing. If you guys, and, and we really appreciate how much um, you guys have got behind this. And if there's things that you want to learn, then tell us. And we will try our best to, to yeah. kind of bring them to you. So I'm just going to come straight out to the side for these. So we're going to come for number three. We're going to come across. We're going to come down a little bit because we want to, you'll see on the, on the diagram, if I just bring that back in a little bit, where is it? Uh, there it is. They're kind of staggered yeah. on each side. So I've come across and then back up there. Uh -huh. Oh, so you're going ac across? Yeah. And looping it in. Ah. And then actually that should have been down a little bit further, if I'm honest. And then we're going to come... Um, yeah, I should have been down a tiny bit further there. But can you see how it kind of creates that looped yeah. L shape each time? So then we're going to come back across to here and then back up to number two in the middle. So it's very much... Oh, so we're always going back to number two. It's very much like the fly stitch that we've just done. You're always going back to number two in the uh, middle. Ah, that's where I went wrong. You got it? And then across to number three yeah. and back Go to back number to two. Okay, I can do this now. And hey, then do you want to see where across to number one. Yeah, go on then. I'm a bit embarrassed. That's OK. We're learning. See, I didn't realise we were going back to number two. So I tried to do the same thing. You know, we went across and then went down. I did that number three, and that's what I got. That's wrong. But I know my mistake now, going back to the centre. That's OK. No, that's, that's fine, not, though. It's not OK. But the thing is, it's all about learning. And this is why we do it really slow. Not the and red we, bit. We oh, the yellow, I did the yellow bit. The red <laughs> bit was not before. <laughs> that's last week. Yeah. That was, that was last so week. So the yellow one. bit was mine. OK. But that's I, fine. I get where I so went wrong. So have one more try. All right, I will. And then we'll take it over to the feather stitch. So I feel I'm holding the class back. It's OK. It's OK. We're, we're fine. We've got loads of time. OK. So this is what I mean, we've got we do this over three hours. You know, we, we take our time with each of these projects. Once I'm happy that you've if, if Yanis has got the hang of it, you guys will have the hang of it. OK. This is why we have him. <laughs> he's like the he's like the kind of the, the lowest common denominator. <laughs> I, are you saying that I'm the weakest link in the class? It's a fair comment. I'll take no. it. I'm not saying that at all. OK. OK, right. I'm going to uh, swap to a red one. Uh, oh, no, that's orange. I want that later. Let's go for red. Um, and we'll start on the quill stitch. You get the hang okay. of it on the lines first, because yeah, yeah, that'll okay. kind of stand you in better stead. Once you've got the hang of it on the lines, you're going to move on to the actual feather itself. So let me just pop a knot in the end of here. And away we go. So now I'm going to be looking at my my kind of number two line this is a heat erasable marker so it doesn't really matter so that is the say is equivalent to my number two line that i was working on before there's my number one and there's my number three okay let's put that three bit in a bit better is that better there you go so we're going to start the same way as we did before so we're going to start on number one Okay. And we're going to come up to number two. We're going to come back up on number two. Come in the middle there. I'm going to make these stitches a little bit smaller. Back up on number two. And then we're going to come across to number three. Now, I'm... On, on the previous one that we showed you, we kept the stitches quite even. This, I'm following actually the lines that are printed on. So the, the kind of movement of the stitch is going to change. It's still a quill stitch, but the movement of the stitch is going to change to follow the line of the feather itself. So we're going to come up in the middle, always back up in number two. So one, two, three, two is what you're aiming for. Okay. So then we're coming back across to number one. And keeping that loop back up in number two. OK, I got this. And then across to number three. Mm -hmm. Caught 
around the end there. There we go. And back up in number two. And it's creating kind of different sizes of stitch on each side that's going to give you... Let me just bring this one back in so you can see. There you go. Can you see there's like there's different sizes on, on each side, but it's oh, still creating right. that kind of spine down the centre and then you've got different sizes coming off each one. And the overall effect yeah. is of that kind of really kind of stunning feather effect. Can I just so you're just going to continue doing it. This yeah. one's one that you're, you're not going to see the results straight away. And initially you're going to think, oh, that looks a bit messy. Keep going. This one really is one of those that just has to kind of build all the way up. Hayley, can I ask something? Yes, of course you can. Is, is that right then? Just from my practice, I'm going to so go show on me, to show me, show me. Have a little look. Yeah, perfect. That that's it. it. One, and then back into number it. two. It's all about going back to number two. Number two, that's it. Okay. There you go. All right, I'm going to go it. to the feather. Do it. Go, go, go. No fear. So there you go. And then three. And with the three, because it's a bit tighter next to the other one, we're going to go three and two. And it's always going to look slightly different on both sides. But that's fine. That's what we want. That's what's going to give us that really nice kind of feathered effect. And then back to one. Line one, that is, and then back to the centre, which we classed as line two. And then when you get to the kind of central spine of the feather, that's when you're going to stop. So to end your stitch, you're just going to secure that loop by going over the top of it, going through to the back, and then tying that off. So what I'll do is I'll come back up and we'll start this next one along so you can see that starting to build up next to each other. So again, to secure these off, you're going to stitch underneath your previous stitch and then you're going to snip it off, split that into two lots of three and take one lot back underneath. Come on. Come on. There we go. That's it. One lot back underneath and then tie it, double knot, either side of that previous stitch. And that's going to give you a nice secure knot to it. But it's also going to be nice and flat for you. Lovely. There you go. And then you can trim those off. So I will trim them off because what will happen is if I don't trim them off, they'll start to get tangled up in my next one. So I'm going to put another knot in that. We're going to start at the top again. And I'm going to work our way down that next kind of, is it a, oh, I knew the word for this. Go on. It's a, a is it, it's not a frond, it's a something. The kind of bits of feather, they've got a proper name. Okay, so this time, this one is going to be number one. This solid one here, uh -huh. that's our number two. And this dotted one here, that's our number three. So we've just kind of moved everything along a little bit. Let me just put that two in so you can see properly. That's a little bit better. So we're going to start again right at the top. Okay. So number one. Yeah. Up to two. Back into two, coming up the other side. And then over to three. And then back to two to catch it, and then back across to one. And then back to two to catch it. So you can see how these are all kind of related. You can see how they all kind of work uh, together yeah. in the same family. And it builds up really quickly. Now you've got a lovely message here from Sheila. Sheila, thank you so much. We really do appreciate this. And if you do want to get in touch, if you've got any questions, this is the beauty of us being a live show. We love hearing from you, studio at thecraftstore.com. So Sheila was saying, Hi, this is the best thing, craft long that is, the craft store has done. I'm learning so much. I have never done embroidery in my life. Watching Haley is the best thing. She explains so well, and I would uh, totally agree with you there, Sheila. Last week we were doing the penguin. I hope you keep on doing the craft along. Well, the craft along is strong, Sheila. And just if you uh, weren't watching the start of the show, this is going to be our next project with the craft along. It's from. Uh, it's going to be on the 2nd of August. We're going to be doing that craft along. But what 
a beautiful, beautiful embroidered box. You get everything you need to make this box and you only have to wait three weeks and we're going to be doing that one, but it is available and details are on your screen right now to get this. By the way, if you still want to get involved in the Stitchinary, uh, you can do that. So what we're saying to our viewers, because a lot of viewers are watching and purchasing this right now, great price on this. So you are saving 9 99 it's five pounds. And the beauty is you can place your order, then you can revisit this show via Rewind on our website, The Craft Store, or go to our app where you can equally go to the Rewind option and revisit any show here at The Craft Store. Okay. okay, so I've just finished, you saw me stitching there, that second piece of the feather, and you can see it starting to build up now. And the more you stitch into this, the more you're gonna get that effect. And you can do it as, as close together or as far apart as you feel. And yet, yeah, it will look a bit, You'll initially you look at it and you think, oh, well, that's a little bit all over the place but it will come together and you'll see that if I just put that next to it, let me just shuffle it along a little bit for you. If I put that next to it, you can see it's exactly the same principle on this. We've got some long ones, we've got some short ones, but the overall effect comes together really nicely and it also gives you kind of a, you know when you've got a, um, something that's got a, like a, a, one of the shimmery cards like John's mm. got where it's got yeah. kind of one side that looks one colour and then you bend it in the light and it looks another colour. Yeah, like that's exactly the effect that you're going to get with this. You can see it especially on the blue there just as you move it. It gives you that kind of shimmery effect which is, is absolutely brilliant. So have you got the hang of that one? Yeah. Do you feel like you could finish your homework if you had to? I'm not yes. going to make you. Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> so we've got one more stitch that I want to get through this week. Um, okay. Just because we're going to convert it into a book next week. So I, do, I just want to leave one stitch for us to get through. And then I, I want to spend most of the last week getting it into its booklet form. Okay. So the last one we're going to go for is a cretan stitch. So that is the little leaves that are on the fifth panel here so let's get the hoop onto them yep. so you guys can see where I'm working and I'm going to just whiz it the right way around so it's the right way around for both you and I and this is the one we're going to go for so okay. this one looks so different so I'm going to show you a couple of samples that I've got first so you can see this one so this is exactly the same thing and all of the ones that I'm going to put on here are exactly the same stitch they just look incredibly different. So this is the kind of first example, and you can see that um, uh, we've six leaves on here because we're also going to play with the number of strands that we use to create the stitch. So these ones are done quite far apart, but then these ones are done a little bit closer together. If you have a look in the one that you've got there, that one's this absolutely one? gorgeous. I know our Patty's done that one. These are done with... Um, different amounts of strands but much more densely packed together She's and you can see that, that, yeah. that kind of the center that central spine of the leaf is created by the cretan stitch and i know you've got patty's example yeah. over there just showing you here if you have a little look at this uh patty's done such a beautiful job with this stitchinary it really shows where you can take it and the joy is you're learning but you don't realize you're learning as you're going with these yeah and these are really kind of good reference guides as well because once you've finished with them you can always either write notes in or you can write notes in mm -hmm. to the um the instructions and keep the instructions with it and it all folds up into that really handy little booklet which means you can keep them and you can refer back to them because then if you're if you're doing a project of your own mm -hmm. like one of the little embroidoodles that we have got on the show then you can you use all the, the things that you've learned in the various stitchineries and there are loads of them you can see some more of them kind of yeah. behind me on the back here and they'll teach you about all kinds of different stitches so there's ones for knots running stitch mm. bl uh, blanket stitch i think did we do blanket stitch no yeah, we did we chain have. stitch you, no we didn't do blanket stitch but i've seen your blanket stitch and just to point out a stitchinery so we're doing this is day two of our craft along and we've got obviously additional days coming up to so day three and we're going to be breaking it all down and eventually we are going to to be putting our book together as well so it is an absolute step-by-step -step with the craft alongs where you get to craft along with Haley. and Haley's had so many great emails coming through but this is the one we're working with our beautiful feathered stitch love that okay 
Okay, so uh, with the cretan stitch, mm -hmm. the reason we put six leaves on there is because we want you to work one of each of the leaves in um, uh, different um, different strands, amounts of strands. Okay. So what I've got here is I just cut a quickly cut a piece off, and if you notice, I'm going to need your help on this one, Marcus. I need a super duper close up, please. If anyone can do it, it's our Marcus. <laughs> I should have warned him about this. Mm -hmm. So. I'm just kind of starting to pull these apart and I'm trying to keep as still as I can for him. Mm -hmm. But can you see there that this is actually made up of six really, really tiny strands of yeah. cotton? So what we'd like you to do is do one strand on the first leaf here, mm -hmm. two strands on the next one down, three strands, four strands, five strands, and six strands on the final one. Uh -huh, so we'd like okay. you to kind of experiment with how the different amount of strands looks. And yeah. you'll also notice I have actually put a, a spine in each of these leaves for you to follow with your stitch. Okay. Now, we're gonna, uh, one strand's gonna take me hours. So, well, <laughs> not gonna take me hours, but it's gonna take longer than the 15 minutes I've got left. Mm -hmm. So I've got three here in the orange and we're gonna start with that one. Right. So, let me just bring this across. So, hopefully, if I can get a hat trick with you, yeah. then I'll be more than happy. <laughs> you just do your six. You've got, you've got um, some green left on your thing, haven't okay, you? Okay, yeah. I've okay. got some yellow. Right. That's fine. Uh, yellow or green, whichever you like. So, where we're going to start is we're going to start at the base of the leaf. And we're going to come up. And we're looking to kind of span across each time. So you're looking to start kind of almost on the kind of diagonal bit of the base of that leaf. So okay. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come to the mm, left of that central spine. So do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to put, draw a new spine in and just exaggerate it a little bit so it's a little bit clearer for what we're going to show you. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to draw a new one in that's a little bit wider. Can you see that one that's a bit wider there? Yeah, okay. Okay. So I'm going to come from here and I'm going to cross across. Mm -hmm. And down, so the other side, what would effectively be a straight line from that point. But then when I come back up, mm -hmm. I'm going to come up on the right hand side of that spine but underneath the stitch that I've just made okay then we're going to come across to create the other side of the leaf so we're going to come down there and then when we come back up we're going to come back up on the underneath of the left hand side of the spine so we're always coming up on the same side of the spine so if i'm on this side when i come back up i'm coming up on so say the left hand side i'm coming up on the left hand side of the spine if i go down on the right hand side i'm coming back up on the right hand side of the spine and what that will do if i get a few stitches in is that will start to create a crisscross effect so i'm leaving that loop first though because what i need to do is i need to come up on the inside of that loop. Do you want me to start that again? No, no, I'm good. You're good? Okay. And then we're coming across. We're coming down. Yeah. We're leaving a loop. And I'm coming back up on the spine that is on the same side as I went down. But underneath it, underneath the loop. And can you see that just starting I'm just going to work it a little bit looser than I normally would. So I'm leaving a loop. Let me just pull that out a bit so you can see. So I'm leaving a loop and I'm coming up on the inside of it. I'm leaving a loop, coming down. I'm leaving a loop. Oh, I made a knot. That's not the kind of loop I want. There we go. Loop. And then coming up on that side, underneath the loop on the same side of that spine. And what it's doing is, can you see it just starting to develop that crisscross section oh, yeah. in the center? If I just uh -huh. tip it up a bit further, it's creating that crisscross bit in the center, which is what will give you that kind of 
extra bit in the middle. Let me just, there's another one. Can you see them? Yeah, oh yeah. And then there's another one underneath. There, oh. that's what it's creating. It's creating that crisscross in the center. Yeah. And obviously the more densely you work it, the more coverage you get. And if you make a really fine spine like we've left in the center, that will effectively create the center of that leaf for you as you're stitching. So all you've got to remember is whichever side you come across to, you come back up on the same side of that spine. Yeah. Because you want that crisscross element to be in the centre. Now, obviously, this is a little bit... I would normally work this a bit tighter because it works brilliantly. Oh, did you see there? I forgot to put my foot to come back up there. So I'm just going to loosen that off, create a loop, and come back up on the inside of that stitch. You always want to be on the underneath of that stitch because that's what's going to create that crisscross element in the centre. So leave your loop... Come to the centre. Come to the centre. Yeah. So I think starting off is the hardest part with this stitch. Yeah. So what I might do is just do the starting off bit again. I'll leave this one where it is. Right. I'll get a new um, needle and thread and we'll start this one off again because I think if you're going to lose your way on this, it's right at the beginning. So I'm going to use my six-stranded one. Okay. Um, and you can join me. Have you got a needle thread up? No, I haven't, but... <sighs> oh! Oh! Oh, oh I've got... just unthreaded it! Oh, no. <sighs> oh, don't worry. You, you go, you go. Do you know what? I'll, I'll take take my green one. No, I can't do it. Take I can't my take your green one. Take my green okay, one. OK, I'll take your green one. I'm going to cut the orange one off and we'll start again. OK. I'm, I'm, you can't leave a man behind here. I mean, I, We've I got to man, get this done. I'll, I'll man be honest down. with you, I was, I was man down there. <laughs> I spent all of that demonstration trying to thread my needle. Oh, well, I mean, to be honest, that's that's sometimes the hardest bit. And we are trying to, in the other kit, we've got some easy thread needles oh, okay. and they're fantastic. So I'm, I'm actually trying to get some easy thread um, kind of cruel work needles cool. sent over. So then, that you know, if that's a bit that stops you, there's no more excuses. OK, I'm with you. you Let's ready? do this. So, so we go to the left gonna, of the stem. Left of the stem, we're going to come up. Yeah. And we're going to come across to uh, some point at the, towards the bottom of the right hand side of the leaf. Okay. We're going to come back down. Right. We're going to leave a little bit of a loop. And we're going to come back up on the right hand side of the stem. Okay. So that's what you should have so far. Okay, I got you. You got me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm there. I'm there. I had a physics teacher and she used to always say, are you with it? I'm with it. OK, splendid. So then we're going to come across to the left-hand side of the leaf. I'm doing very well with my left and rights tonight, I must right, say, because usually that's, my, that's where it falls down. We're going to leave the loop. Same distance as you went up the other side? Yep, about the same. Yeah. And then we're going to come back in. To the centre. To the centre, but this time we're going to be... We came up on, on the, the left-hand left, side. Left. We're going to be back up on the left-hand side. All right. I'm and there. then we're going to come across to the right-hand side. And ideally, you want to be just above your previous stitch. Mm -hmm. If you want a nice kind of dense fill stitch, I'm going to create the loop. And because we're on the right-hand side, go higher or right-hand oh, side of the stem, same length, you just same kind of want to uh, keep it nice and even. Keep so it... keep it even with your spacing on your outside. Oh, okay. And then we're going to come back across to the left. We're going to go down, leave the loop and come up the left-hand side of the spine. I'm glad we did this again, Hayley, because I, I'd given up. Well, that's why up. we always, you know... I've given I, up. I'm, I'm not having a man down on this. Well, we've, you, we've had a 100% record. I won't, I won't forget this. <laughs> we've had a 100% record on people managing to you, do stuff so you far. You carried me on your shoulders. <laughs> hot work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying okay. a bit of lockdown weight. It's not my fault. <laughs> aren't we all, mate? Aren't we all? Um, there you go. And then always on the underside of your stitch. So leave that loop, put the stitch in, whatever side of the leaf you started your stitch, that's the side of the spine you want to be coming back up on. Mm -hmm. So down, create your loop, same side of the spine, back up. And you can see, I think, more clearly with this one that I'm doing a little bit more densely and I'm doing it to the same um, kind of lines as the spine that's printed on there. Can you see that just starting to 
to form in the middle there where it's kind of double thickness. Yeah, yeah. So that's what this does so well. This does such a nice job of kind of leaves, flowers, all of those things. It does such a beautiful job. Feathers as well. It does a really nice job. And it's a really nice alternative to a satin stitch because sometimes if you've got quite a large area to fill, like this is quite a, a wide span. Um, and if you were doing this with a satin stitch, what you'd find is it gets quite baggy. Mm -hmm. But because you've got that kind of crisscross in the center, it's really halving the distance of those stitches. So it's making them a lot more secure. So it's a really good alternative to a satin stitch mm. if you're looking to fill quite large areas. Good shout. There we go. There's something incredibly Moorish about embroidery work. And it's so Once nice all the get, emails oh, we got it's, sent. It's one of those where you think, oh, I'll just finish this little bit. And the next thing you know, it's at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see that starting to come together there. So your homework, I'm very conscious we've only got a couple of minutes. Your homework for this week, obviously we started the, uh, let me just turn this around quickly. We started the fly stitch. So you need to complete your Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Really straightforward. And you've seen that all of these are in the same family of stitches. They all kind of lead on and link on from each other. So your fly stitch tree is your first piece of homework. Mm -hmm. and just get this, pop this off so we can see what we're doing. The um, feather stitch across there. So your two feather stitch feathers. That's your next piece of homework. And then your last piece of homework is uh, to finish off these guys over here and work on your closed cretan stitch, which is this one here, which is your leaves. Now remember, you've got six leaves. Yeah. So ideally, I want you to be working uh, a single floss thread, two, three, four, five, six. And it's really worth just kind of marking. I mean, you'll see the difference. You'll see what they, they look like. And you can kind of really tell which one's got a single thread and which one's got more. But if you just want to kind of mark next to them which one's which, then that's perfect. So, Hayley, next week... I'm happy. Shall I just show you what I've done? I'm very proud of you, Yanis. I'm very proud of you helping me. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Hey, look at that! It's not bad. That's not pretty good, good. But it's not bad. That's all right, that. I will take that. I, I will take that as well. So learning, and this is what the craft long's all about. It's actually, uh, and we've got to say a huge thank you to Haley because this sums up. No, I'm the going essence to be Miss Smith now, the, like like a teacher. Miss Smith, yes. thank you, Miss Smith. <laughs> I do my homework, Miss Smith. Um, <laughs> this is what sums up the craft storm. We place so much emphasis on the demonstrations. So even in typical hours, we try and give our guests as much time as they can to share their education and get you excited about craft. Thank you for joining us. There's plenty more coming up. When's the next craft along, Haley? <sighs> Tuesday, tomorrow, Tuesday. Matthew. Okay, oh, amazing. Matthew Palmer. So Matthew will be back with myself again. Uh, yeah, it is, brilliant. Amazing, don't go anywhere, plenty more.